Hello, friends. Welcome to day 63 of being stuck at home with me, JP. Uh, I am actually recording this on day 62. It's um, late in the afternoon, and my schedule got kind of wonky for tomorrow. Um, I have to get up at 5 to go run. Otherwise, I'll be running after work, and it'll be a little bit too warm for me then. Um, so yeah, so that's happening. <laughs> um, and it is Thursday, so I decided to just jump on the throwback Thursday thing. And I am rerunning um, episode two of the Depressed Not Dead podcast. And um, yeah, so hopefully, I you know, I got a little bit of feedback from the, running the first episode. And some of you were pretty interested in how uh, some of my, my, my language has changed, my tone of voice, things like that. Um, so, you know, hopefully, hopefully, uh, it gets you interested in the rest of the show. If you haven't listened to the, the way back ones, um, and really mostly, hopefully it's not too, uh, too boring for you to listen to them again. Um, I'm still taking feedback on it. Um, it's going to be another week before Thursday comes back. So, uh, we won't be doing this again for at least seven days. So, um, yeah, that's it. Um, I'm just going to run it and hopefully everyone is doing well and everyone is safe and your friends and family are safe and all that. Um, so till tomorrow, I'll talk to you soon. Hello, it's Thursday, March 17th, 2016. And as of this recording, I'm still depressed, but I'm not dead. back and thanks for listening everybody. Um, I do appreciate you taking some time to listen to the words that fall out of my mouth. I hope I get to a point where I'm uh, providing something of value not only to me uh, hopefully therapeutically but maybe to someone else who uh, is on a similar path that I am uh, with mental illness. I guess I would like to see that I touch someone and make life a little easier but for now Let's uh, just see what we can get out of this head of mine. I hope you're listening to this, your second show. I would like to think someone listened to my first show and thought, oh, wow, I want to hear what else this guy has to say. Uh, a few things I did notice editing that first show is how flat my voice was. And I think part of that conveyed my feeling at the time. I was pretty well down on that day, really low energy which is pretty general for me, but that just seemed to be where I was at. Uh, it's not my goal to sound like a uh, 1960s TV mortician all the time. Uh, in general, I do not have that much, um, well, I don't have that much range in my voice. I guess I am pretty monotonous in my speaking, but I will try to liven it up for you guys. Another thing I did notice when I was editing was how often I used um or uh in my speech i did edit out probably 60 to 70 of those and i'm not sure where i'm going to come down on that in the future i, I notice i do say it a lot sitting here just in front of this microphone is is a little weird and i do kind of require that to kind of get my thoughts ready to come on out and uh, tickle your earbuds so We'll see what happens. A couple other housekeeping notes. Uh, you can reach me on Gmail at depressed.zero.ded at gmail.com or on Twitter at depressed underscore zero underscore ded. I would love to hear from you. Just let me know, hey, I listened to your show. Um, who knows? I'm, what the heck? Send me a message. Say, hey, your show sucks. I won't be offended. I would appreciate you give me a few ideas on how to make it better, but uh, I'm open to any and all communication back and forth with this. So without getting too farther along into boring stuff, uh, let's get going. So 
I think I mentioned on the first show that I was getting ready to start into a partial hospitalization program here nearby. It's um, for those who don't know, uh, there's a couple different ways you can go into intensive therapy. The first would be uh, mandated inpatient hospitalization, which was it's common for folks who have uh, attempted suicide. Um, I imagine it's in every state. I've got a lot of education still to go. Uh, so when I had my attempt, I was hospitalized uh, initially for the trauma of the ER. And then from there, I was put into what was commonly known as the psych ward. Uh, I was placed into a mental health uh, facility. It was a wing of the same hospital that I was at. Uh, I was put there against my will, but it, it, it kind of makes it sound like I've been enslaved uh, to work the coal mines. But uh, I was placed there. Um, I could not leave. Uh, it was a locked environment, so I couldn't get out if I wanted to. I couldn't say, hey, I'm done. I want to leave. I was there until the staff psychiatrist felt that it was that I had was at a situation or in a mental state where I could go home. So that is one option. There are other options where you can voluntarily go into the same kind of uh, mental health care, uh, be it a wing at a hospital or, or I suppose there are still freestanding institutions uh, and to get the kind of therapy that you need. And I believe in many cases, cases like that, you are free to leave uh, as you see fit. And then there are these kind of partial or day programs, they may call them in other places. And essentially, these are folks who really have a need for an intensive therapy, but are deemed to be safe to go home in the evening, uh, spend time with their family, whatnot. Many times, folks who are hospitalized in the first way that I talked about, uh, who are mandated to be there, they kind of, you could call it, graduate on to this day program. So at this location that I'm at, there are a few people who uh, were in that same situation. Um, this hospital has a, a gigantic, well, a gigantic makes it sound like we're all crazies here, um, a, a, a very large and very well-respected mental health wing of the hospital. And the kind of the outpatient program, the partial, is on the second floor and all the floors above that seem to be the, the closed areas uh, where folks who are uh, dangerous to themselves or to others uh, or who have voluntarily gone into a program where they uh, day and night they are at the hospital um, breakfast lunch dinner so on and so forth so I got there Monday morning 9 a.m. there were 15 people that first day well let me back up so it's a three-week program that continually moves so there are at any given time no more than 20 people in this program divided up into two groups. This first Monday, there were eight people in my group and seven people in the other group. Uh, they, and they do that so they can kind of maximize the number of patients they see on any given day as part of their three-week program, given the staff that they have and the time re required, but also dividing up into two groups so that it's more manageable. So we started out in my group with eight people. We sat around some great big old tables, uh, think conference room kind of tables. That's kind of like our one hour of group therapy where we each get a chance to talk about maybe what's on our mind, kind of recap what we did since the last day. Being a Monday, lots of folks had stories about what they did on the weekend, some good, some bad, how they were feeling, feeling better than last week, better than not as good as the week before. Uh, you know, whatever is on your mind. So... It came to my time to talk, and I pretty well diverted all conversation from that. I, I wasn't sure what I wanted to say. I was and still am kind of struggling with how to present myself in this group. I, While I'm not a social butterfly or the uh, king of the party, I do tend to put on a um, lighthearted kind of joking persona pretty quick-witted, kind of, I guess I have a novel way of looking at things, which tends to surprise some people. Uh, my wife is always exclaiming, how, do, how did you get from there to there? How did you put those two things together? And I've, I've done that for a long time, and 
I'm starting to get the feeling that um, not unique to me, but that's kind of my mask, right? That's who I put out there. And I do that as a way to kind of hide myself, keep myself from showing who I really am or maybe just who I think I really am. So I'm, I'm sitting there and as I was driving in that morning, I made the decision that I wouldn't be that guy at this program. I wouldn't deflect. I wouldn't um, kind of use my, my wit and humor as a way to lighten moods or avoid my feelings, <laughs> even though I, I, I don't know that I really have a firm grasp on what my feelings are at any given time. So I, first thing Monday morning, I wasn't really sure what to even say. And so I, I, I just kind of passed on that. I, I said a couple things, you know, hey, I'm blah, blah, blah. So I said, yeah, uh, you know, I gave him my name and I said what, you know, I've been diagnosed with for maybe how long I think I've been dealing with uh, depression. And that was about it. So the psychologist who is the leader of our group did ask me a couple of questions, but true to my uh, poor memory, avoidance, um, kind of belittling bad habits of mine, I, I couldn't tell you what they were. But we got through that, got to hear a little bit from each person, get it, you know, it, it, it kind of. So after that, so we take a 10 minute break and then we go back for one hour. And I may have my, you know, I may have my hours wrong here, but we did a, a deep breathing class you know, supposed to extol the virtues of deep breathing, relaxation, uh, the benefits of deep breathing, which I'm all on board with as far as the relaxation potential of deep breathing, the kind of calming effect of deep breathing, the hopefully the ability to get into a more mindful state where you're just focusing on you and trying to quiet down the, the voices, the arguments, the bad thoughts in your head or crazy uncontrollable good thoughts I suppose uh, so I'm, I'm all on board with that I'm not necessarily one who partakes in that although I maybe should um, I, but the real takeaway unfortunately that I took from there was that the the social worker who was leading that kind of got into some quackery some woo talking about uh, deep breathing oxygenates your body better and microbes can't live in oxygen um, so that's better for you telling us that or reading quotes from doctors supposedly who said that you know if people would just learn to breathe properly that would reduce 50 to 70 percent of doctor visits which I guess without really saying it he was basically saying it'll cure what ails you and okay uh, then we started, you know, there was, we talk about ancient Chinese medicine and invoking, you know, lines in the Bible and uh, talking about our chi and our life or body's energy, you know, energy field and all that kind of crap, really. So I, I kind of was lost on that. But we got through that class and then we took a 10 minute break and then we did another. We kind of went on farther with the breathing went into a multi-purpose room and she popped in this uh, CD of this, uh, I couldn't even tell you the kind of breathing it was, Qui-Gon Jinn or, you know, I don't know. Some, but so we listened to him and he was supposed to be teaching us the ways to get to this perfect kind of breathing for relaxation, meditation, better, more healthful, wonder, snake oil kind of breathing. So I we kind of go along with them and, it, you know, I'm trying to practice belly breathing, right? Diaphragmatic breathing, which, you know, makes sense. And, uh, you know, there's there's good data that says that, yeah, you know, you, you will get more, more oxygen into your lungs. Uh, the lower part of your lungs is where most of the oxygen blood exchange happens. So it, it makes sense. So I'm, I'm going into it. And then he starts invoking ancient Chinese medicine and chi and I forget what he called this center in your body but he's like yeah so we're doing this uh, so it kind of would lose me and I would get agitated and irritated and and lose all my good relaxation feelings that I've been having you know if we go on so step one step two step three and here you are and we get to the point at the end where he's basically telling us to and this is you know pure zen kind of garbage <laughs> I guess I shouldn't say that I, I don't know but it, it strikes me as such that we got, we're supposed to get to a point where we're breathing naturally 
we're breathing we we turn our breathing over to our body right so everybody should know that you or at least understand that you know you can breathe on your own <laughs> or breathe uh, autonomously I guess is the word uh, where you kind of breathe without knowing it right so obviously when we sleep if you're at work you may be working at your desk for 20 minutes and then all of a sudden you go <gasps> and go for your breath so your, your body will breathe for you or excuse me I, I don't like that phrasing your brain will breathe for you which is you I guess so yeah.